So if you if you move from the the promise of this, of saying, you know, I can actually make an impact myself and have some control of the direction it takes to the practical reality of starting a company with no money, you know, just with, with no customers, but with, with really no technology, uh, but an idea that then has to be tested and created. Um, and what has that journey been like for you? It's been, what's it, a year and a half now? Yeah, about a year and a half. Um, the journey started really as an idea for a product that I wanted in my own life and I went looking for it in the real world. I tried lots of calculators, online carbon footprint tools, um, tried building my own Excel spreadsheet as a decision-making tool, found them all to be frustrating or in some way deficient um, and really not fun because so much about climate <coughs> has been about guilt and shame. Um, and so that was really the place that we started. My first step was to develop the idea on my own and I went to spaces where I could apply Lean Startup Method for short periods of time, thinking through the idea, coming up with a short uh, design version of what it could look like, design only, you know, mm -hmm. no, no actual building, testing it with a few friends, testing it with people, going back to the drawing board, rewriting it out, until I got to the point where I had an idea of what the tool could look like or what a solution might look like to this problem that I had defined. Um, but I, f I knew I couldn't do it by myself, and I needed to go talk to other people who knew about this. Um, so I went to go find people who had worked on data who had worked on software development around carbon footprinting tools. Um, and then once we got a little bit of initial grant money, we had the ability to actually build something and test it with users. So we did a very small build. We basically invested three to four weeks of intensive development experience and, and work to build a very minimum viable product of the app, tested that with about 50 to 100 users over the course of several months, mm -hmm. um, did really in-depth interviews to understand what was working, what wasn't, and then started also understanding what could the business models be around this. Mm -hmm. um, and only once we saw significant enough interest from the users, high enough engagement, um, and then significant enough paths to, to revenue that we felt like we'd gotten some customer research that there would be monetization on the other side of it, did we actually think about raising the money to, to build it. So what's the, you know, what's the, process of raising money, like you've attended a number of classes that have told you sort of what a VC is and what term sheets look like and, you know, first you do this, then you do that, then you get the money, then you form a board. You know, what's that actual journey been like? Um, what I learned was that you can know the process, but you don't know how to actually raise money. Hmm. So it's really helpful to know something of the context of what is a VC, what are they looking for, what does a term sheet look like, what should be the 10 slides in your deck. All of those things are really valuable, but there is absolutely, from my experience at least, no substitute for just going out and trying to raise money and failing and then having to revise. Yeah, no amount of, of reading can substitute for the actual experience of getting the feedback and, and having to go back to the drawing board again and, and re-explain yourself. And most of the time that feedback is no. Yes, exactly. So I think how I structured my my initial ideas was we, we had a little grant money. We'd built out this MVP. I said, okay, great. We're ready to go raise money. Um, I put together my 10-slide deck, and I m set up some meetings with investors. I had, I think, something like eight or nine meetings over the course of two weeks scheduled. Every single one of them said no. Um, and I felt extremely disheartened after that. I thought I had done all my research and I would be ready. But after going through that process and hearing some of the same things from some people, I decided to change some of my deck, change how I was telling the story, put the team slide up front, um, be more, um, be, to have a stronger opinion about which monetization channel was gonna come first. So some of these things you can only learn when you're talking and getting real feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and then also kept hearing the need for more data on, on my users. So instead of just testing with what we initially tried was 20 users, we had to increase to 50 or 100 users to start mm -hmm. getting meaningful data about what was working. And after we did that, we spent another couple months doing that. Then we went out to raise money again. Um, and by that time, I was a little bit more successful in mm -hmm. raising from, from angel investors and then eventually from a VC. Um, and I think the advice of first go to the people that you don't think are gonna invest and then mm -hmm. later save the people that you really want for later is great advice.